What's up, everybody? Russ with RWG Research here. Uh, so today's the last day. 2012 Pulse motor build off. Uh, I'm trying to get your entries in today. Uh, I was having some server problems, but I think I got them resolved, so they should be just fine. Um, so yeah, this is my second entry. Um, I hope you like it. Um, I kind of built this one sort of after seeing Jim uh, decide to build a Aussie type motor again with his rodent coil. So I uh, originally was really liking what he was doing and uh, decided to make something similar. So this is actually running off of a super cap that came out of a Hot Wheels car. When I was about 12 years old I could not figure out what was in it to make it go and go and go and not ever have a battery. I believe that was one of the first uses for these little super caps. That was, man, 12 years ago or more. Maybe more than that. So I have no idea what the voltage is or the capacitance. Um, I'm guessing it's a couple farad. Um, I don't think it's real high. I think it's just a couple. And uh, I don't have anything to measure that high of a farad. But uh, I just got done charging it with uh, three AA, or well, <clears throat> those are D's, but three 1.5 volt batteries. And uh, it will run for approximately 20 minutes. Uh, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, depending on uh, maybe what's surrounding it. If there's metal or anything around, like right now it's sitting right on top of a piece of metal. If I move it over here, it'll probably run better. Now, <clears throat> this is sort of based on the Aussie motor schematic. Um, but I threw in a couple of twists. Um, one thing that I did, well, one thing, one thing, the reason I like this circuit is because it uses reed switches. And since I'm using such low voltage, reed switches are okay. And the cool thing is, <clears throat> when the circuit is switched on, it gets a pulse. When it's switched off, all the collapsing magnetic field has nowhere to go except for back through these diodes, back into the run uh, source. So, you don't have to worry about all these crazy electronics. As long as you don't not do a high amperage, these little reed switches should do just fine. Um, I am actually running this on an extremely small amount of power. And I'll give you measurements here in a little bit, but it's pretty impressive. Um, you let me know if it's that impressive or not. I don't really know, but it's pretty cool. Um, so, I'll run you down through what this is. The reason uh, that it's standing up... Uh, interestingly enough, this bearing, hard drive, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I keep calling these hard drives, this is a tape deck, uh, VHS tape deck, head, and interestingly, I thought that it would, you know, spin more free in a vertical position, but actually, it spins more free in a horizontal position, so I found that out, um, just by the amount of resistance that it has on this little setup. So, the Aussie motor has two reed switches, and uh, it basically turns on the circuit with two reed switches and connects the battery to the circuit, and then the both reed switches turn off and discs, disconnects the driving source completely. And all the back EMF or the EMF or CEMF or whatever you want to call it goes back into the run device. So, that's the reason I like it. There's no complex circuitry, it's very simple. And it's the best way to capture every bit of collapsing magnetic field that you possibly can. Now this thing, uh, it's probably running at about 2.5 volts right now, maybe slightly more. Um, you charge it up to about 4.5, but it drops pretty quick and stables out about 3 and then slowly drops from there. Uh, I played with different diodes here, and uh, I need some shocky diodes. Uh, they're low turn on, like about 0.3 volt. These are like one volt or more, and so I'm wasting a bunch of energy there. Um, so this thing would be a lot even more efficient if I had the right diodes, and I'll probably end up getting some. Um, <clears throat> the coils. Here's the interesting thing. All right, so these coils, for those of you who have been following them for a while, you know exactly what these are. Those are one inch Starship coils by filer wrapped being held together with concrete sealer 
Um, I have a water-based concrete sealer that after I make these, I uh, literally just coat them and the, the sealer kind of runs through everywhere and it sticks on there real well. And uh, those are my one inch Starship coils. Now, the way these are set up, the coil is here to buy filer. So I have the first coil going in and then the second one. So you've got the start of the first winding and then the end of the first winding goes back into the start of the second winding and back out. So similar to a pancake, Tesla pancake coil is the way I got these connected. Um, I should have designed these a little differently after I really understood the Aussie motor and how it was supposed to work. Um, the Aussie motor doesn't just run on EMF, uh, but it also runs on CEMF, which is the um, which is actually the the like electrical energy being generated by the magnets as well as the backspike. So this really primarily keeps going better because of just the backspike. Um, it doesn't produce a whole lot of voltage without that because the magnets are so small. Um, but the reason I wanted to do that is because the, the Tesla pancake coil is uh, it's got some unique properties that I thought would be good for this application so that's what I did. Now one thing that's quite interesting and I'm going to show you how I made these coils but one thing that's quite very interesting is that here is the type of wire that I used for this okay and it's little bitty spools and they came off of uh, relays contactors alright now each one of these contactors has this much wire I do not know what rating of voltage they were may have been 12 volt, may have been 5 volt, may have been 24 volt I don't know um, but the amount of wire on here okay get this that's that's the amount of wire I have on, on a new spool alright when I started these two spools were completely full just like these you can see how much I used okay now I made all of these coils on this system with the amount of wire that I took off these spools alright so where normally you'd have a whole entire coil like this on there instead because of the Starship coil design it uses minimal amount of wire uh, based on the Marco Roden's math um, Actually, uh, HHO for volts, Richard. Thank you, buddy, for designing that one. Um, so it actually sits on there. Um, it uses a minimal amount of, of copper to, to make a magnetic field that's pretty pretty strong for the size of coil and amount of wire. Um, that's good because I didn't want to use too much wire because I'd have a real high resistance with this tiny wire. Matter of fact, I've never even measured the resistance of all those coils. I need to do that too while I, uh, I'm going to show you some other stuff. But uh, basically, I've got this winding jig that I made and I've got this little pin jig that I made okay and basically I literally just wrap my wire if I can get it started around here alright and then I literally just wrap my starship coil okay I know I'm missing not hitting the right pins but you get the idea alright then once I get everything set I push it all the way down to the bottom and I just keep going I made 36 wraps of 12 points so one turn 36 turns but they're 12 points per turn which actually equals up to 432 which is a very unique number for this type of system uh, for this type of math so that's how I made those uh, this little pin pin winding jig is pretty sweet. Um, basically, the wire just comes right off the coils, and I've got a place to push my finger here for tension, more tension or less tension. And uh, for those of you who've watched me for a long time, know all about that stuff. So let's move on back to this pulse motor build off. I am going to stop it and unsolder these connections and show you the voltage and the milliamp. All right, so I'll be back. Okay, there you are. We are running on these three. By the way, I like Duracell. Don't look at that. We are running on these three 1.5 volt. These are actually what D cells, but you could run it on triple A's or they make quadruple A's. By the way, I have some. Anyway, we are running at 7.34 milliamps, 
and we are running at 4. Point, or yeah, 4.742 volts. All right, or 35.1 milliwatt. Um, and we're running at a pretty high voltage. This will run all the way down under one, uh, under two volt. It'll run to about 1.9 volt. And um, I'm actually going to connect this stuff back together so that you can see that. So I'm going to disconnect this. Alright. I'm going to connect it to this cap. So that we can get a... Now, the bad thing is, is that these leads are magnetic and they will interfere really bad with my oops they'll interfere really bad with my magnets now it runs extremely slow underneath that little bit of a power but the fact that it runs is pretty amazing I got my meter backwards flip it around now, uh, a lot of this magnetic properties on these clips are going to screw me up here. So, just for right now, do a quick measurement. We got 2.5, we'll say 2.5 volt at about 4 point, we'll just say 4.5. And we'll go 4.4. 4.4 milliamp. That's 11 milliwatt, and uh, it will run like this until this voltage gets down to about 1.9. So pretty impressive, actually. Um, pretty impressive. If uh, let's put it at 1.9 volts, we'll stay at. Uh, it's dropping down. We'll say it's 4 milliamps. That's 7.6 milliwatt. Okay, and it's running on that cap right now. There are no, there are no external batteries. These are just hanging down here. There's no, there's no batteries hidden back here. Okay, it's running on that super cap. Now I know it's going slow, but interestingly enough, you could sit here until that drops all the way down to 1.9, and then it'll finally quit. So. Pretty cool. Um, what I'd like to do is I've got this little Nokia battery. It's a 3.7 volt. Uh, it should be a lithium ion. And uh, I've charged it up. So let's go ahead and hook this up. See how slow it's going? Just so I can say I'm not lying to you. Let's drain the voltage a little bit. right back all right so it's not turning real fast and a lot of this has to do with my clips here they're magnetic that really throws things off really really throws stuff off here but uh, it will run I've been playing with it for a day and a half I've got it. I got it done a day and a half ago it will run on that low of a uh, a voltage you gotta get rid of all the magnetic obstacles around though. Really throws it off pretty bad. Alright, let's hook up this other battery and we'll do a couple more checks. Alrighty, so here it is. We are running on this Nokia 3.7 volt battery. I just charged it up. I had not, well I charged it for about an hour on a power supply. Uh, so I had no idea what this battery really is uh, as far as condition. Uh, this battery was sitting on the shelf. It's probably been there for four, three or four years. Um, come out of a really old cell phone. I've got a couple of them that's been sitting on the shelf for at least that long. And uh, it's cruising around along. You can see how stable the voltage is. Um, I wish I had a meter that actually went lower. I don't know if I do. <clears throat> Further out on the scale. But it's just sitting there running. It's just as happy as can be. And it is charging um, through the EMF, but it's not charging more than it's using but it is helping um, so we'll sit like air and run all day now I do want to show you you can run it on 12 volt 
but the goal for me was to get it to run on this super cap it's the only one that I own and I will definitely need to get some more and uh, and play around with this setup because it's pretty sweet uh, really quickly I'm gonna show you what the magnets look like it's that same rotor I showed you except I put a magnet on the inside they're just magnetically stuck to the other ones it took took me a while to get it tuned and uh, once I got it tuned it uh, it worked real well. I play with a bunch of different type of magnets on here um, I forgot to tell you one thing, the reason I put these on this uh, tube it's actually a piece of quarter inch tube, you can't see it, can you? piece of quarter inch tubing is so that I can actually move this in or out and adjust where this coil is sitting. So their clearance on those coils are extremely tight. Let's see if I can show you one. I don't want to flip this lid. All right, let's let's stop it here. So you can see the clearance is is really really tight. Um, you gotta you gotta remember those are quarter inch by quarter inch magnets. They're two together, so they're half inch by quarter inch. But but there you go. Um, all right, so real quickly. I would like to, we'll hook this up to 12 volt real quick, and then I'm going to take a resistance measurement. Alright, so, this thing gets to cruising on 12 volt, and it uses a lot more current, but it does work. This battery is probably pretty low. What are we at? Yeah, I need to charge it. It will usually take off by itself on 12 volt. So right now it's just running on this lead acid battery. And uh, it gets to cruising. We'll let it speed up. We're at about what? 12.27 volts. And probably drop down to, and we'll call it 19. It'll probably drop down. That's 233.13 milliwatts. And I'm driving down to 18. Once it gets going, it'll stabilize. And uh, I did do some back EMF charging tests. And um, depending on how I connected it, uh, let me find my cheat sheet. I did a bunch of tests. Now, yeah, these are a bunch of scribbly notes, but I connected these coils in all the different fashions. And I did 12 volts, and I did the other volts. Um, Depending on how I connect these coils, um, if I connected them in parallel and series like this, I could actually get 200 volts out and run on 53 milliamps. Okay, the EMF. I, I had to put a a uh, oh man, what was it? It was a 103 written on the cap, whatever that is. I put a cap on there and just put it on the two diodes to see what the voltage was out. And I can get 200 volts out on the right setup with uh, 13 volt in. Now on the low setting, um, the best way I could get was connecting them the same manner, except tying the two together here instead of along the long ways. And uh, I was pulling 14 milliamp and getting about 24 volt back. So I, I could play with this all day and try to figure out what works best. And, and I did. And I tried different diodes, and I tried all sorts of different stuff. And uh, the glass rectifying diodes uh, work better, but the shocky diodes are going to be way better. No idea what the RPM is. Um, I could check it, but I'm not going to because I don't have time. I've already used up a bunch of a bunch of your guys' time. Now, one thing I was going to do, okay, and I might still, I actually was going to put this in a vacuum. Okay, and I'll show you what I did. I actually took these bulbs, and I, these are like HID bulbs, I actually got them split, and I did a couple. Alright, so I've got some that are globes, tops, if I don't break them. Alright, some that are bottoms. And what I was going to do, I'm not going to do it today because I don't have everything set up and I don't have that motor tuned yet. I broke them enough to where I think 
I can get them to sit together like this. Put my motor back in there. Okay. And then melt these two together. And then down here on the end, I was going to pull a vacuum, same place they did. And uh, actually put this thing in a vacuum. I just, I don't want to do that yet. Um, I don't have everything ready and I'm afraid I'm going to melt some stuff and break some stuff. I've also got these little glass tubes that came out of there. Um, I was going to put on the end to give me a little more space. I was actually going to pull the vacuum, but I need to do some tests. I need to, I need to do a test on one that I didn't melt back together and find out what the, what's going to work and what's not. But I was actually going to do that. All right, looks like we're down to seventeen point five milliamp. All right, I'm going to disconnect this. I'm going to take a resistance reading because that's something I haven't done. Makes a good alarm clock. You can hear how it's pulsing. So, oh, well, it ain't going to beep at me. That's okay. Anyway, let's check the resistance. Okay, it's not on right now. So it's 192.6 ohms. It's pretty high. Um, just out of curiosity, let's check just one individual coil. Not 24 ohms. And then two coils should be about 48. Yeah, okay. So there you go. And that's my entry. I hope you guys uh, liked it. All right. So there you are. And, uh, yeah, I would like to do some tests, but I really think I could get this thing to run a lot better. Even better than it is right now. But, uh, you guys tell me, I, I honestly don't know, uh, you know, how efficient that really is. Is it efficient or not? Uh, I mean, it, it is, but I've seen a lot of people build a lot of really cool stuff out there. Oh, yeah. Alright, well, um, let me know your thoughts. And uh, I had a lot of fun, and I really did. I learned a lot of different things. Um, I honestly think that the, the Aussie motor, if built correctly, could do some pretty cool, cool stuff. Uh, pretty efficient motor, that's for sure. But, uh, yeah, so it's it. This is it, final day. And I hope everybody is going to get their entry in. I really hope you do. And um, if it's not, if you guys don't actually get your entry done, um, just put it in there anyway. You're still in. In to win, baby. Um, yeah. I'm going to go get some sleep. I haven't slept in a while. So, I'm going to feel good in a little while. Have a good day, and, uh, I'm out. Peace. You thought I was going to cut it, didn't you? Try to get you a little bit better view of these coils. Pretty cool. Alright, peace out guys.